Hi, welcome. My name is Mo, and you're on my channel here on YouTube, Mo Mo Moo. I have a Halloween pick a pile of tarot cards reading for you today. So I don't really know what the question is going to be for each pile, but I'm hoping that at the end of reading each pile, I'll be able to figure out what the subject matter is. But for now, it's just going to be very Halloween-y. I have my Halloween decorations out, um, and I have picked uh, vampire cards and um, very dark cards for this reading. There are five cards per pile. So let me just go ahead and introduce the cards that I'm going to be using. So I have the Vampire Tarot. I have the Tarot of Vampire. I have the Deviant Moon Tarot. The Gothic Tarot. And last but not least, Santa Morte Tarot, Book of the Dead. So I have three piles for you today and they each are represented by a crystal. So let me go ahead and introduce the piles to you. Pile number one, you can't really see the piles because the main card is black and I've got a black um, tablecloth on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to the piles with the stones. So the first pile has the blue obsidian. Pile number one. The second pile has the electroplated rainbow aura obsidian. Pile number two. And the third pile has the green obsidian. Pile number three, green obsidian. So this is pile number one with the blue obsidian. This is pile number two with the rainbow aura obsidian. And this is pile number three with the green obsidian. So go ahead and pick a pile, pile one, pile two, pile three. So just go ahead and pick the pile that feels like it's being drawn to you and then you will receive your Halloween message. So for those of you who picked pile number one, you pick the pile with the blue obsidian, the crystal, the blue obsidian crystal. So let's go ahead and get into your Halloween pick a pile of tarot cards message. So the first card we have is the two of cups. So for this Two of Cups, there's a lot of blue in the picture. It's a very cold colored picture. And the red gems on the cups really remind me of blood. And it's, um, I get the impression that with the Two of Cups being a card that represents union and uh, like, a, like a pact, um, I feel like with the idea of the gems being blood red, there is some somebody that you um, know that you are very, very close to that um, really feels connected to you um, by blood. Somebody that you know who could be a best friend, um, could be somebody that you're yet to meet, perhaps um, in the future you will meet this person, but there will be that person if there isn't already in your life that you feel connected to by blood, almost like stronger than a family tie. And with the blue being the coldness, it could be that that person is going to get in touch with you by the time the snow starts falling, or also that you will meet that person by the time the snow starts falling, or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it could be winter for you over there. But I really do feel like there is a connection with somebody that is yet to come or that you will be reminded of the connection that you have with that person in the near future. The next card we have is the Seven of Swords. And it looks like somebody's coming out of a coffin there. Seven of Swords. 
and it says hope reflection on the on the coffin on the inside of the coffin hope reflection so for the seven of swords as we probably know by now and if you don't i'll let you know that the swords are a representation of the mind and seven is a very organized number it's very organized like when you think about number seven you think about how there's seven days in a week and how um, each day kind of has its own energy and how every day that you pass through in the week has its own um, associations with deities or with a certain energy that you know by the time Friday comes around we are celebrating that work is over but then when the weekend's over we're celebrating well, we're not celebrating Monday unless you really love to work. And I think that's a good thing if you do like to work. But when Monday comes around, I celebrate the fact that I feel like you can work hard, especially if I've had a relaxing weekend. So there's that idea that seven is really um, a number of organization. And the fact that it's about the mind, it's about the fact that you are, are you have an organized mind. And this could be what um, causes you to have such good friendship with this person in your life that is already in your life or that is yet to come. But I feel like um, there's a, a rebirth with this Seven of Swords um, towards organization. So maybe if you haven't be been feeling so organized lately, I feel like this Seven of Swords is saying that there's a, a rebirth um, into organization and into getting um, your life together the way you perhaps always did like to do or perhaps the way you've always aspired to do. Also, it says hope and reflection on the casket on the inside, hope and reflection. And I think that this card is also saying that there is a lot of hope coming to you. Um, and there's a lot of um, future days where you'll be able to really reflect on, especially since there is um, a new year coming in January, January 1st, 2021 is coming. It's just around the corner. Um, I think you'll be reflecting a lot on your past year and how um, you've really responded to um, really the call of hope and being uh, a beacon for other people and also a, a strength, a strong person for yourself to lean on, really believing in yourself and feeling like um, even though it's been a really difficult year um, for everybody, that you've really hung on, you've hung on to hope and you're taking that hope into the new year. Also, um, the the celebration on the Wheel of the Year, Samhain, is coming up and October 31st is the Witch's New Year. So the Witch's New Year is basically um, representation of a spiritual year. So from October 31st to October 31st, it's a new spiritual year for, for whoever wants to uh, adhere to that. So for you also, I feel like um, because this is a, a, a Halloween themed um, tarot reading, that idea of Halloween coming up on October 31st or Samhain really um, allows you to know that there's a lot of hope spiritually for you and um, you will be also, like you probably have been doing a, real, a lot of reflection spiritually. And I think the more you reflect on yourself, the, the easier it is for you to, to have that communion with the Two of Cups with um, somebody in your life that you currently have in your life or that will be coming into your life um, perhaps sometime in the, in the winter. Next card we have is card of the Four of Swords. So the Four of Swords is really about rest and relaxation of the mind. Um, really, I, I feel like even though this card is a Halloween card, I'm thinking about lying in the grass and looking at the clouds pass by. And I think it's that kind of energy that we're looking at with the Four of Swords. We're looking at an energy for Halloween for you that is really one of rest and relaxation of the mind. And so if you wanted a positive reading, I think that's a really good thing that you can know that your your mind is going to rest and relax um, as Halloween is approaching and as we go into the new spiritual year, but also um, like the Two of Cups said, as we go into the winter months. The next card we have for you is the Fool card. Card zero, the Fool. So with the Fool, um, I really feel a sense of playfulness for you. I think that the energy for you um, with the Fool card is one of 
um, stepping into the unknown. And I think that's a good thing because you're really embracing the fact that just like 2020 has been very unknown to all of us, it's been quite a surprise and not a good one all the time. But I think that you're um, embracing the idea of the unknown for yourself. And, um, and I think that's a, a good way of managing um, the unknown coming in because if you feel like you're not holding on to past years, like let's say, you know, before COVID started or before, um, you know, all this uh, unveiling of the corruption and racism of governments started, um, I think that we were all in this um, rat race, so to speak, of working hard and never taking a break. And I think that with the Fool card right now for you, as Halloween is approaching and, and the spiritual year is coming to a close, you have started to um, embrace the unknown and embrace um, that part of you that wanted to have the answers all the time and wanted to have that stability of always knowing what was going to happen. But for you, you're, you're much more at ease now and you're much more um, apt to kind of go with the flow, go into um, this two, year 2021 or the new year, the new spiritual year on um, November 1st um, the new spiritual year will start and you're really feeling more at peace spiritually as the new year starts and you're really letting go of things that you always wanted to be um, stable so there's that idea of the fool stepping into the unknown but doing it in a way where you don't feel like you're losing anything you don't feel like um, you're mourning anything you're really feeling at peace with the fool card and stepping into this new um, time of year for yourself so the last card we have for you is the ace of skulls I really like the purple there. I feel like the energy of the purple is very um, much connected to the third eye and crown chakra. And uh, it's very interesting that you that it is connected in my mind to those because the blue um, crystal that you picked, the blue the blue obsidian crystal that you picked, it's a volcanic glass. It's formed out of pressure and heat. And with the ace of skulls, um, it's it's and the purple here, it's it's like um, the Ace of Skulls is telling you that you have been formed out of pressure and heat. And now you have been given this new gift of insight into spiritual things and into how to bring that spirituality into your body with the Ace of Skulls. Um, the skulls are, are, are also a representation of the pentacles in the original tarot. So again, there is that idea of spirit and material joining together to bring about a real purity of mind, heart, soul, strength, body, and intuition. And so there's a, a lot of like pulling lo loose strings together um, coming to you as Halloween is approaching and as the year is coming to a close and we're going into 2021 I really feel like for those of you who picked pile number one there's really a knowing with the crystal it's really knowing how to use your voice to express yourself really knowing how to use your third eye to feel the energy around you and to bring everything together to express what needs to be expressed whether it be standing up for yourself or standing up for others or um, meeting with a new person Person in your life like with the two of cups who will really feel like there's they're closer than blood to you somebody that's going to be like either your soulmate in, as in a friendship or a soulmate in a love relationship or somebody that is going to help you to move forward into this new year i really feel that for you with the two of cups and i really feel like with the rest of the cards here there's that energy that purple energy we got the purple on one side and the blue on the other blue being throat chakra purple being crown chakra as far as i can um, understand what spirit is telling me. I really feel like the purple energy is a, is a very mystical energy, is a very um, regal and royal energy to have. And I really feel like that's um, something that you're putting out there, that idea of being royal and regal and in control and uh, presenting yourself in a very um, professional way. So I really feel like there's a lot of good things coming for you as Halloween is approaching. And um, as you step into the new spiritual year on November 1st, and as you step into the new year on January 1st, 2021. So I hope you enjoy that reading for those of you who picked pile number one. 
I am Mo. Please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for this channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Welcome to those of you who picked pile number two. You picked the Rainbow Aura Obsidian. So let's go ahead and get into your Halloween message. So the first card we have for your message is the Five of Cups. And I guess the beginning is always the hardest, right? And I think that the Five of Cups actually imparts that to us. It kind of tells us that because the Five of Cups is about um, trying to not pay attention so much to um, the things that are negative in your life and paying more attention to things that are good. And so I feel like with the Five of Cups, with this card, it's about uh, recognizing the good because there are five cups and um, all of them are in front of this individual that is being represented on this card, the Five of Cups. And the person is looking at a skull and so it's a very realistic um, mentality that you have for those of you who picked pile number two with the five of cups um it's a very realistic mentality you have it's not so much being uh neglectful of things that aren't good in your life or things that have gone wrong as much as it's um being grateful for the things that have gone right and it's, so i really feel like going into the new spiritual year on november 1st 2020 um it's really going to be one where that attitude of gratefulness is being carried with you from um, this, this spiritual year into the next spiritual year. So if you don't already know this, um, October 31st is the end of the spiritual year, uh, as according to witches, and November 1st, 2020 will be the start of the new spiritual year. I'm sorry if I said it wrong before, I might have said 2021, but 2021 is coming up January 1st, and that's the beginning of a new actual annual year. So I really feel like with the Five of Cups, um, emotionally you are prepared to face the things that are coming into you because you're already practicing a sense of gratitude for the goodness that's in your life. And so I think that there's a lot of um, commendability there for you because even though 2020 has been a hard year for you, um, emotionally it's also been a year for you emotionally where you've grown by leaps and bounds and you're really paying attention even if it feels like at some points the negative emotions outweigh the positive emotions you still find a way to bounce back and to uh, be grateful and to see the light at the end of the tunnel and to see the silver li lining around the dark cloud or to see um, what's coming in the future like a rainbow after a rainstorm and I think it's also the fact that I don't know if you've ever heard that cheesy saying it's not about waiting for the rain to end but it's about learning how to dance in the rain I feel like that's that also represents you as, as cheesy as it sounds it's also about um, you being able to really dance through those storms um, regardless of the fact that um, most people would not be dancing through a storm um, and it's not to say that it's been easy for you it's just to say that your positivity is really powerful your, your positivity your positivity of mind um, really helps you to bounce back and to have that hope that you need to keep moving forward and I feel like for this new spiritual year coming up on November 1st 2020 um, you are bringing that into your spiritual life with you you're bringing the knowledge of the strength that you've gained from um, learning how to bounce back through your positivity so the next card we have for you who picked pile number two is the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands. And so I do see a lot of um, willpower in this card with the Knight of Wands. Um, going into the new spiritual year, you're bringing, like I said, that spiritual power with you, that spiritual energy, um, but also um, the energy that is going to be used in your life in this new year, January 1st, um, 2021. You will be having that uh, new uh, creative um, 
inspiration. A new creative inspiration is going to be coming in for you um, starting January 1st, 2021. Um, and it will be um, growing greater and greater as the year progresses. And so I really feel like if you are some sort of um, artist or some sort of, um, you know, writer, or if you, whatever talent that you have been trying to use, um, I feel like with the new year coming with the Knight of Wands, um, you're really rushing into that creativity because it's really um, overflowing. All those creative juices are overflowing for you. So you're really feeling motivated to create in the new year. And also you're, you're going to start to feel that energy coming in um, as Halloween is approaching that creative energy. And maybe right now you're learning how to rest and to just be happy with the fact that you've made it through this year. But I think that the creative energy is starting to flow as Halloween is approaching and you're starting to see that that's what your new year holds for you that idea of being able to create and be able being able to use your spirituality in ways that you've never done before so the next card we have for you is the hanged man 12 in the major arcana the hanged man with the hanged man It's really about learning how to adjust to difficult circumstances. And so this is a Halloween encouraging message for you that Spirit is saying that you are learning. You are learning. You are growing by leaps and bounds. And even though at points it may feel like you're stuck, you are actually moving in your mind meaning you are developing a sort of mind that can only be developed by staying in the same spot. And um, as I said, the Knight of Wands is going to give, going to start your energy flowing creatively uh, as Halloween is approaching. But with the Hanged Man, it's really about you're okay where you are right now. And if you need to rest, like I was saying, with the Hanged Man, I really feel that there's that energy of rest. And... Um, the hangman also has enlightenment. A lot of ideas are coming to the hangman's mind as he's hanging there. Um, because as you know, when you are hanging upside down, all the blood flows to your brain. And so for the hangman um, being a spiritual card, there's that idea that um, all the spirituality is going to your mind and um, you are really, you are starting to uh, really tap into that enlightenment that you've developed through difficult times in this past year. And um, with the Knight of Wands creative energy coming in with the Five of Cups um, positivity that you have, have, the hangman is telling you that despite the fact that you've been through difficult times you've learned to be comfortable with those difficulties and those difficulties have had have allowed you to reach a higher sense of self self-enlightenment and I think that um, on one of the um, pyramids that one of the psychologists from the past created I don't know who, what his name is but um, the highest part of the pyramid point was enlightenment, self-enlightenment. After you have all the basic needs, you reach a point where after you have love and everything, you reach the point at the top of the pyramid where you've reached self-enlightenment. And that is, the top, that's, that is the utmost top of the pyramid point. That's as far as you can go. And so I don't know how old you are, but I think that to be able to reach self-enlightenment uh, at any age is an amazing thing because it means that you've really learned to get up that ladder of that pyramid and really reach the highest state of consciousness and so with the hangman i really do feel like that's um, something that you can congratulate yourself for knowing that you are learning how to um, ascend the next card we have is 17 the star and what did i just say ascending ascending to a point of enlightenment ascending to a point of um, otherworldliness with the star um, this person is holding uh, lifeblood in her hands and um, she's really like her third eye um, area is enlightened. I don't know if you can see that. She's got like a third eye um, ring around her head and it's glowing and and it's so it's so deep your enlightenment and your ascension that it's going blood deep for you it's going right down to the marrow in your bones it's going right down to your life blood this enlightenment it is changing who you are from the inside out and I really do feel like that 
is happening for you as Halloween is approaching and as this spiritual year, 2020, um, starting in October, October October 31st to November 1st, 2020, was the start of, uh, no, sorry, October 31st, 2020 of last year to October 31st, no, sorry, October 31st, 2019, sorry, to October 31st, 2020 of this year, you have come a far, far away by leaps and bounds. I'm sorry about confusing you with that, but it's been a year since your spiritual year has started. Last year, the spiritual year started on November 1st, 2019, and it's going to start again on November 1st, 2020. So from 2019 to 2020, October 31st, this uh, change has been happening in you, and it's it's made you a whole different person. You have changed from the inside out, and I don't know if you can feel that, but if feel like as Halloween is approaching and um, like I said as the spiritual year is coming to a close you're gonna start to notice that you are a completely different person from what, who you were last year and that as you are going into this new year January 1st 2021 you're gonna realize that you're taking this new you into the new year to fulfill things that you've never fulfilled before the last card we have for you for those who pick the rainbow aura rainbow aura obsidian um, is the Two of Skulls. So the Two of Skulls here is uh, also like the Two of Pentacles and it's really about balancing um, who you are spiritually and physically. Um, the, the skulls represent earthly um, earthly things and also um, the connection of, of body to spirit because you are not just a body you are also a spirit and you also have a soul and all three of those things are connected with you with the two of skulls so the two of skulls looks like this it's a girl and she's leaning on a mirror and um, the person that's looking back or back at her is wearing a different dress and so it really could represent um, the person looking back at her being a completely different person yet it's still her you can see in the mirror it's the same person but she's wearing a different dress and so what did I say you are a completely different person and that's that's just um, represented here by the two of skulls that was the last card that we had here that idea that you are a completely different person and you can congratulate yourself and see that you pushed through the hard times with the five of cups, the emotional um, distraughtness that you might have gone through this year, um, you know, emotionally, and uh, you you became a whole different person. You you had the knight of wands, you had the hanged men, you had the star card, and the star card is really about uh, becoming a, a, a new person, just like ascending to new heights, like I said. And with the two of, of skulls, it's really about looking into the mirror and saying, that's still me, but there's something complete, completely different about that person that's looking back at me. And that's because you created this change for yourself through responding to your outside environment and to the inside of you. So I congratulate you for that. You picked the rainbow or a obsidian and this is a really psychic stone. Um, the black obsidian um, absorbs the negativity around you and um, and gets rid of that negativity in your life with the black obsidian. And the fact that it's rainbow uh, aura, black obsidian, um, means that you have a, a psychic con connection. And it could just be the psychic connection to yourself, knowing your psyche, knowing how you tick, um, it could be a psychic connection with those around you. Perhaps you're seeing people in a different light with this rainbow or obsidian. But whatever it is, just know that you have gone through negative times and you have absorbed those negative times and you have been transformed just like the black obsidian or a rainbow or a stone crystal does. It absorbs negativity and it changes it, uh, changing the outlook for you. The black obsidian absorbs the negativity so that what is left is positivity. And you are like this black rainbow or obsidian in the sense that you have absorbed, you have absorbed a lot of negativity and you have left positivity all around you. And it doesn't mean that things are always going to be positive. It just means that you have become a whole different person through this past year, spiritually and also physically. And you are bringing that into your new year in January. But starting this Halloween, you're really starting to see the effects of that through your creative ability with the Knight of Wands. Um, 
really learning how to channel your creative energy and to put that out to the world, um, however that may be. And so I congratulate you because your story has been not an easy one. It's been fairly complicated with these cards, but you have learned to uh, be comfortable um, to also be uncomfortable and through the uncomfortable times to ascend and to uh, allow this new creative energy that's coming to you as Halloween is approaching, allowing it to flow into the new year of January 1st, 2021. So I hope you enjoy that reading. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and hit the not notification bell for this channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hi, welcome to those of you who picked pile number three. Your stone was the green obsidian. So that's pile number three. So let's go ahead and get into your Halloween reading. So the first card we have is the Ten of Cups. So the cups are symbolic of emotions and there's 10 cups here. And for the 10 of cups for you, it's really about fulfillment um, in love, in relationships and in life. There is a sense for you of fulfillment. And I think that that's what you can expect to see as Halloween is approaching is that you're going to start to feel really, really fulfilled, really a sense of having um, what you need and uh, emotionally and uh, feeling um, satisfied uh, physically, um, really feeling that even though um, around you things may not always be perfect, you still feel a sense of complete gratitude for life. I really feel a lot of positivity for the, for you with the Ten of Cups starting the reading and I really do feel a lot of love for you. So perhaps you're in a relationship with someone and um, with the Ten of Cups I really feel like there's emotional um, satisfaction with this person at this time or as Halloween is approaching you're going to start to feel a lot more like that love connection is there whether it be a love connection with a friend or with a partner I really feel the sense that it's more with a partner so perhaps you're married or you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or somebody that you're starting to see romantically I really feel like with the ten of cups because of the fact that there's um the love aspect in this card with the person uh, lying down on the tombstone and with the uh, lover there there's that sense of a love it could be a quirky sense of love too you know because um this is a vampire card and there is that sense that it could be non-traditional love it could be a non-traditional love like that um it could just be something that um you have that like can't live with them, can't live without them relationship where you love them to bits, um, but you also like your alone time and you value your alone time and absence make the heart go fonder for you as well and for your partner where even though sometimes um, you do need your alone time, you still have that love connection there and uh, it sparks right back up when you meet with that person. The next card we have is the Two of Cups. So what did I say? There's more love here with the Two of Cups. It's this um, connection, this heart connection. Um, this skeleton is reaching in and touching the heart of the person that she's holding in her, her arms or his arms. Um, I don't know why I said her arms, but it looks like the um, skeleton here holding the heart is the more feminine aspect of the uh, relationship and the other skeleton right here looks like the more masculine aspect, but it could be, um, you know, uh, it could, it doesn't, like I always say, it doesn't have to be two feet, a male and a female. It could be two females, two males, whatever you identify as the two of cups. It's really about feeling like you are bringing your emotional, uh, stability to the relationship and this other person is also bringing their emotional stability to the relationship so with the two of cups it's not about coming to the table feeling um incomplete and wanting to find your sense of completion in this person it's uh, an energy more so of i am complete the way i am i'm satisfied with who i am i can be independent but i also want to choose to love you and to have you in my life and to um, allow us to better each other as we spend time together and as we go on in our life path together so the next card that we have is the ten of cups Guys, you got the ten of cups again um just like this first card you had here so you have two ten of cups 
Um, so, wow. I mean, what else can I say about that? Like, you've already had the Ten of Cups for your first card and you have the Ten of Cups for your third card. Um, I'm really feeling like with this card, though, there's a child in this card. And um, it doesn't mean that you have to have children, children. I mean, you could have fur babies, but you could also have a child with this person, perhaps in the future, um, maybe in the new year, January 20. 21, maybe you're thinking about starting a family, maybe you're thinking about getting uh, a pet, whether that be a fish or whether that be a cat or a dog. Um, there is a sense of, with this Ten of Cups, there's more of a sense of wanting to bring other people into the love around you. So maybe um, you're wanting to invite people into your love, into the love that you have with your partner. You realize now that you've reached a stage where um, you're able to um, allow people into your relationship who will uh, al be allowed to feel this connection. It could be a twin flame connection. Um, you know, it could be uh, a soulmate connection. I, I don't really think there's a difference, but I know that there's a sense of wanting to give the love that you give each other to other people in your relationship. So um, maybe you have an open relationship and you want to bring someone else into your partnership. Maybe you want to bring a child into your partnership. Maybe you want to bring um, an animal into your partnership. But there's that sense that you have reached a point where you love each other so much that you're not afraid to uh, give love to other people. And this, this can be happening closer to Halloween. Like this is a Halloween reading. So the message could be coming to you in the future. Like as Halloween is approaching, perhaps you're starting to feel this energy within you. And um, perhaps you've already discussed it with a partner or that with, with your partner. Um, perhaps it's something that you're thinking about discussing. But there's that energy really of love, completeness, um, independence yet wanting to choose to love the person and really starting to allow your cups with your 10 cups to overflow to other people. So maybe it's also volunteering as a couple at a homeless shelter or maybe it's um, you know taking time away from each other to uh, help somebody, perhaps helping someone paint their bathroom or um, perhaps helping someone to move. I really feel like the love that you have right now for each other is really a love where you're not afraid to go out and to help other people because you know that when you come back home or when you come back to your phone and you call that person that you love that they're there for you and that they're they were just they're there for you just the way they were when you left them to go do something or when you left them to go to work that day. The next card we have is the King of Pentacles. So with the King of Pentacles, I'm feeling a lot of um, stability, um, and it's and it's kind of like a masculine stability with the King of Pentacles. Obviously, um, it's it's really uh, being stable um, financially, and perhaps um, the person that you have in your life has been able to allow you to. Uh, grow as a person because they've given you shelter. Perhaps they're somebody who pays most of the bills and they allow you to really uh, branch out and be yourself or really to feel comfortable in your home. Um, with the King of Pentacles, it could be an older man coming into your life, perhaps with this uh, Ten of Cups um, love connection with the Two of Cups as well here with the love connection, I should say. Um, it could be somebody coming into your life in the new year, the new spiritual year starting November 1st, 2020 or the new year year, January 1st, 2021, because um, this Halloween reading is also a spiritual reading, right? It's about being spiritually fulfilled for you. And even if you're not feeling that yet, there is that sense that it's coming into you as the um, spiritual year is closing. So um, October 31st, 2019 was the start of your new spiritual year. And October 31st, 2020 at midnight is the end of your spiritual year that you started on October 19th to uh, October 31st, 2019 when you started it. It's ending this month um, on the 31st at midnight. So there's that idea that spiritually you have worked hard for this relationship. Perhaps you've had a lot of ups and downs in your relationship and a lot of bad times. But with this um, King of Pentacles, there's that, that, there's that idea that one of you in the relationship, whether it's um, your partner or you, has really um, brought a stability, a stability physically and also spiritually to this person's life. So I don't know if it's you bringing um, the stability 
responsibility spiritually uh, to this person or if it's the other way around. I don't know if it's you bringing stability um, financially or um, uh, in your abundance, but there's that sense of completion. There's that sense of completing each other, but also not needing to have each other. But also the idea that if you ever um, were to... Um, be away from this person there would be that sense of loss but that you could still keep going on and being independent because you will always have that person in your heart so even if there's a breakup um, it could be temporarily or it could be a breakup that lasts for the rest of your life but in that sense it wouldn't be a twin flame connection and but it would be a connection where you were able to learn a lot about yourself the next card we have is the prince of scepters so it's um, scepters are wands and it's the Prince of Scepters. So it's the Knight of Scepters. So the Knight of Wands. Um, okay, there's again, there's that creative energy flowing in with the Knight of Wands. I think the Prince is the Knight because the Princess, I believe, is the Page. So um, let's just say it's the Knight of Wands because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm sorry, I'm not really familiar with this tarot deck as much as, much as I should be, but the scepters is definitely wands and the prince uh, comes before the king. So I believe this is the knight of wands and it does look like he's moving into uh, to start a battle um, and to, uh, you know, um, start a fight to start a battle to finish a fight, I should say, is more accurate. Um, it could be that um, you are looking at a relationship where this person is always starting fights with you. Um, and I think that the, the, the key here is communication. I think that you need to have the willpower within you to know that this person is somebody that yes, you can't live without, but you can't live with it sometimes either. But I think like any relationship, we need to remember that there is no twin flames, um, perfect relationship. Every relationship takes time and effort. It's like love is not something that just, uh, love is not just uh, a plant that you can let sit there and not tend to, not water, not put in the sun. Uh, love is a plant where you have to take care of it, like any plant, I should say, like this plant that I have here. Um, it needs water, it needs sun, sometimes it needs to get, have the dead leaves taken off of it, um, sometimes it needs to have the roots cut off because they're, they've been overwatered and it needs to be replanted. Sometimes the plant's broken and you need to put it in a cup of water to allow it to grow roots um, if it can so that it, you can replant it. But that's just what I'm trying to say here is that love it takes effort. Love, yes, sometimes with love you can be on cloud nine. Um, sometimes with love you can be, you know, in the dumps. Um, but the idea is that love is a garden that needs tending. Um, love is not something that you can just let sit in the corner and expect it to grow. And so I think that another message for you with this green obsidian is the idea that don't worry if it's not always perfect in your relationship. You do have two ten of cups, which means that there's a lot of emotional fulfillment. And I think that you know that. I think that you know that this is the person that you want to be with and this is the person that you want to work hard with to allow other people into your life and into your love relationship. Um, not in a sexual way, but in a way where you can bring friends in or um, you know, encourage people together, work on behalf of other people together or separately, knowing that you can always come back to this person when you go home or that you can always go ahead and call this person when you need help or when you need comfort. Um, with these, with the Knight of Scepters, there's that idea that there's still some fights um, to come, you know. There are still some battles that have yet to be won. And, um, but you know that you have two Ten of Cups cards here. You have the Two of Cups, which is also a love card. And you had the King of Pentacles, which means stability. And so I think that you know that with this person, there is stability, there is love, there is abundance, there is connection. But I think with the Knight of Scepters, you also know that it's not always roses and, uh, rainbows sometimes it, there's a little bit of a storm too and so it's good that we have that realisticness to this reading because I think we need to know that it's not always love 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 sometimes it's you know fighting and sometimes it's you know uh, crying or uh, you know feeling un misunderstood I think with the green obsidian the green is representative of the heart chakra and you pick the green obsidian which is representative of the heart chakra like I said and it's also representative of growth right it's about growing um, 
emotionally. It's about growing in your heart. Um, with the Ten of Cups, there is that idea of completion with this person, but at the same time, there is also a necessity for completion within yourself. And I think that's something that we're always looking for, completion within ourself. And sometimes, um, you know, completion doesn't feel the way we always imagine it should feel because we don't feel like, you know, we got into a fight that morning and we haven't, you know, made up yet. But there's still that idea that Completion within yourself is one thing. Completion within a relationship is another thing. And I think that if there is completion in a relationship, that the relationship is ended. So just remember that love is the garden that needs to be tended and your relationship needs to be tended to um, romantically, um, you know, practically. And I think that as the new spiritual year is approaching, you are recognizing that more and also probably feeling a lot more comfortable with this love person that you're with. Um, and if you haven't felt that way yet, I think as Halloween's approaching and ha as the new year, January 1st is approaching, you're starting to feel that a lot more. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it connected with you. Um, if it did, leave a thumbs up. Remember to comment down below. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video that I might upload in the future, because I will. Um, today was the reading for the uh, first quarter moon. So I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Mo, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.